morning. Whoa. <laughs> um, welcome to worship at St. John's. We're blessed to have you here today as we give praise and worship to God. And I invite you at this time to greet those around you in the peace and the love that we have in Christ. Get that. I invite you to rise as God has called his baptized children together for worship today. We remember the name he has placed upon us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we have our readings from Holy Scripture. Our Old Testament reading for this Sunday is from Ezekiel chapter 2. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me in this, to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and, when, and whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me and hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in reverence for the Holy Gospel, I invite you to rise as we sing our Alleluia. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no, no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, 
And he went about among the villages, teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn. A reminder that this time you can also fill out uh, your attendance cards for today and any prayer requests or address changes, etc. You can include those as well and the ushers will be picking those up during our hymn. and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our epistle lesson for today is from 2 Corinthians, and while I was on vacation, uh, uh, that was kind of the, the book of 2 Corinthians was what I decided just to keep reading through uh, uh, several times, and uh, one of the things that I've noticed over my uh, I don't know, life, I should say, I guess. Uh, several times I've taught Bible studies on 1 Corinthians, and it's uh, very rich and deep and lots of, uh, uh, I don't know, Bible studies just seem to go really good teaching 1 Corinthians. And then uh, a lot of times you say, well, okay, let's go on to 2 Corinthians. And, oh, uh, man, it just doesn't quite translate in a Bible study. I almost shouldn't even say it that way, but uh, when you read through 2 Corinthians, at times you almost think, man, Paul's just kind of rambling. Uh, he's just kind of free-flowing consciousness, which I guess maybe I'm starting to appreciate more and more because that's probably how I talk a lot of times. Uh, but yeah, he's going through and he's sharing uh, kind of this interaction that he's having with the church in Corinth, and he's had a lot of strife with them because they have uh, gotten themselves stuck into patterns of sin, and they've had 
false doctrine that he needs to correct. And then uh, there are these opponents that he's battling against. And so even in our epistle lesson today, um, uh, they leave off, a, I don't know, it's always weird sometimes how they cut the, uh, the text that we have. But I want to share with you verse 11, the, the verse right after the epistle before we go into it. Uh, and he says, I have been a fool. But you forced me to it. I mean, this is where he's just kind of like, this isn't polished, right? You forced me to be a fool, right? Uh, you ought to, I ought to have been commended by you. You ought to have held me up in esteem. For I was not in, at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I am nothing. And so Paul is kind of wrestling with this uh, interaction. He needs to kind of uh, fight a battle. He needs to fight a battle against these other people who are putting down the ministry that he is doing. And so he has to elevate himself, show himself as being superior in his ministry to those people. But he's like, I don't really like doing this because that's not what the gospel is about. It's not about elevating myself, but in a sense, that's what he has to do. He has to uh, share how he is superior and how they are inferior because ultimately what makes him superior is the very fact that he proclaims he's nothing and this is kind of this interaction that's going on in this text he's like i'm nothing but then yet i have to assert that i'm something but the what makes his ministry something is that he's nothing that is focused ultimately on Christ and what Christ has done. And so what makes them, you kind of put in the air quotes, right? What makes them super apostles, right, is they think they're super. And you maybe have operated that way in your life where you kind of just, it's all about you, right? And you're just nailing it. You're doing great, right? And this is what they're doing. They're, uh, they're kind of saying, well, Paul, he's not very good, but I'm awesome, right? And it's just virtue signaling everywhere, right? And we know this in our culture. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's out there just saying how great they are compared to so-and-so. Now, they, oh, wow, if they had if, if they had lived 200 years ago, they would have never done what those people did, right? I mean, and this is how we tend to operate. We're, we're doing great. We're nailing it. <laughs> Paul says, no, that's actually what makes them inferior. So there's this battle. Paul and the super apostles. question is, who will win? Uh, on my vacation over the last uh, 12 days, uh, it, this was the majority of it. Caleb saying, who will win? A queen bee or a queen wasp? Right? Who will win? Uh, Batman, or I, I, mean, I just, it was constant, right? I mean, I don't, I mean, a lot of them were repeating. Who would win, right? I mean, who's going to win, right? And I, I don't know, that's a normal human uh, <laughs> interaction, right? And usually, it, 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 you know, I'd say something like, who would win, a porcupine or a um, hedgehog? I said, well, a porcupine. It's like, no, because hedgehogs have more spikes. I don't even know if that's true, right? Um, it, you know, who would win? And usually we have some sort of earthly determination about who's doing a better job of something. <laughs> Who would win? Well, Paul says, let's fight this battle. He says, I must go on boasting, though there's nothing to be gained by it. Um, as I love his rambling, right? Um, uh, I'll go on boasting. I'm going to uh, share with you how I win, how I'm better, and I will boast about my ministry, although nothing personally is gained by this, uh, but I have to do it, right? I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Uh, you probably heard that as we were reading that today, and you're like, what is he talking about? And I'll tell you, you can read commentary after commentary. No one knows. Right? No one knows exactly what he's saying, right? Um, and, and I think that's kind of the point, right? He even says whether I was out of the body or in the body, I don't even know, right? Um, uh, but God knows, right? And so he says, I, I, I was shown things, and I, I was told things that I can't even share with you. Uh, I, and so he's asserting, uh, I have every reason to be superior from what God has given me, but nothing's really gained by all this. He says, on behalf of this man I will boast, but uh, that's something that God is doing. God brought me into this place. God reveals things. It's nothing that's inside of me. He says, but on, on my own behalf, 
I can't boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. Uh, And so Paul's trying to kind of walk a tightrope, right? I mean, he's trying to say, uh, I'm superior to these super apostles. Why? Because they're elevating themselves. And here's the reality. God has elevated me to this position of apostleship. But at the same time, he says, it's not me. It's not me. I am weak. I am nothing. I'm no more than what you just see in front of me, in front of you. I'm just a man. And I'm just speaking Christ. He goes on in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about, I didn't come with eloquent words or wisdom. I'm, I'm kind of a rambler, right? He says, I'm no more than what you see and what you hear. He says, even going through all this, I've... Well, I missed a page here, right? All right, there we go. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations... A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me. Now, what was this? You can read a million commentaries, no one knows, right? Uh, uh, some of the best guesses might just been related to Paul's eyesight. Uh, he, uh, he became fairly blind. It's something, something that has happened to him so that when he encounters the ministry that God has him do, he is not up to the task. Uh, personally, in himself, he's not up to the task. He's not able to accomplish what God is charging him to do, right? And in order that he would not become uh, like the super apostles who thinks he's nailing it and doing everything right, in order that he would not be like that, but instead looking to Christ, he says this ailment, whatever it might be, was given to him. And he pleads with God, right, to take that away. Is it his eyesight? Is it something physically? Is it? Uh, we don't know, right? But uh, something was given to him by God as a blessing to make him weak and unable to do things on his own power. And he says, "This isn't. Is it, yes, it's a work of Satan amongst his sinful flesh, but this is actually God's doing for his blessing to keep him humble." Uh, This last weekend when, uh, I don't know what Pastor Steve preached on, uh, you know, but uh, when I was in Sheboygan uh, at Trinity Lutheran Church, the pastor was preaching on Jesus uh, doing the miracle of healing. Um, Oh, man, I'm not forgetting who it was. It was the daughter of the, I think it was Jairus' daughter, but um, uh, he was healing her and kind of getting into the reality, you know, why doesn't he do that all the time? Right? Or uh, why did he have to wait? Or why didn't Jesus come? And, and we deal with these things because we face weaknesses. Why do, why do I get something and, and someone else doesn't? And uh, all those things. And the title of the sermon is just simply, What God Ordains is Always Good. <laughs> Whatever God is doing is ultimately good for his glory. We don't understand why he does what he does. Why did Paul get this thorn and uh, all those things? But uh, Paul shares with us that ultimately God does everything he does for our good, for our blessing. So God allowed him to be weakened so that he would rest on the power of Christ. And so what God says to him is, my grace is sufficient for you. I mean, this is so different than the world in which we live, the culture in which we live, both in his day and our day, right? I mean, we elevate, wow, I, you know, I, I win that basketball game because I'm more athletic than you. Or we call it an upset, right? Because, wow, that team should have beat them. They're more athletic, right? Or, uh, or, or we, I'm smarter than you. Or uh, we just, that's how we operate, We operate on elevation, winning by being superior. And God says to Paul, no, actually, to be superior is to be inferior, to be weak. Because my grace wins. (laughs) My grace is sufficient for you. The covering that I give you in Christ Jesus, the power that comes from him is perfect in you, Paul, being weak. You being unable to fulfill the ministry that you need to accomplish. You being no better than anyone else. Only being what people see with their eyes and hear with their ears. It's all you are. 
But Paul, my grace in Christ is sufficient. The power of Christ is powerful. Who will win? Well, Christ wins. So Paul says, therefore. Right? He makes a resolve. Um, He's saying, uh, because of this reality... Um, I am making a determination that I will boast not in even that revelation I had, right? I'm not, and I ain't going to boast in all these ways in which God has elevated me over these other apostles. No, what I boast about is that I am weak for the purpose that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul says, I am more powerful the more that I admit my weakness. I am more powerful the more uh, that I recognize and boast in uh, my insufficiencies. I have, uh, there is more power that Christ works in the ministry around me the more I realize how little I do. For the sake of Christ, then, I'm content. Content in being weak, being insulted, and hardship and persecution and calamities, right? When I am weak, it's not then I am strong, then Christ is strong (laughs) within me. Paul says, man, I feel like I've been a fool, right? This is where we started. But you forced me to it. (laughs) You you put me in this position where I had to deal with uh, 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 this battle between me and the super apostles, but here's the reality, right? I'm nothing. And so we talk all the time, I think, about how Jesus wins, right? Jesus wins over death. Uh, Jesus wins. Um, uh, he wins in the end, right? It seems like sometimes the devil's getting the victory uh, at times. It seems like everything's going <laughs> the wrong direction. But we proclaim, right, in the end, Jesus wins. We celebrate Easter every year, right, that Jesus defeats death. But Paul here, I think, is kind of bringing the reality in my daily life and how I operate in the world and how I interact with you and how we interact with one another. Jesus better win. So it's like, who will win, me or the super apostles? Well, the reason uh, he's contending that he should win is because Jesus needs to win. It needs to be about Christ and his power. It needs to be about we are nothing and we are weak, but Jesus wins. His grace is sufficient. His power rests upon us when we are weak. We have interactions with one another, right? Where uh, maybe we're getting frustrated. Maybe we're signaling how we're better than so-and-so, right? And we're, you know, going back and forth. And maybe we're not even saying it, right? But we're thinking it, right? And, and, and no, okay, right? Jesus better win in this situation. So I better acknowledge my weakness. And maybe even thank God sometimes when I'm not up to the task. <laughs> and I'm not as good as maybe Josh is. I don't know, I'm just looking at Josh, right? Josh, uh, well, uh, I'm not, maybe I'm, I'm not as good at that as someone else, but that's okay. Because Jesus needs to win amongst his people. Jesus is victorious. His power is made perfect in us, weak people, gathering together to glorify him and to receive his gifts. In some ways, Paul's kind of rambling a little bit, but I think he nails the reality (laughs) as he's wrestling with this church in Corinth. Jesus better win amongst us. Uh, He is glorified. And so he says, I'll boast in my weaknesses because in doing so, ultimately, we are boasting in Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Amen. At this time I invite you to rise as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Oh, man, who would win between me and PowerPoint? Uh, <laughs> I guess PowerPoint, but uh, we rejoice in my weakness. All right. So uh, we continue in thanking you for your offerings, and we sing our offertory and let the vineyards be fruitful. Let the vineyards be Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son endured rejection in this world. You lead us likewise through a hostile world that shows no honor to your church or its wisdom. Do not let us lose heart. Steal us for opposition and let us rest confidently on what you, Lord, have said. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And holy God, you, your great and mighty work is to create faith by your Holy Spirit in the eternal blessings of your Son, Jesus Christ. We implore you to make your preachers effective, to proclaim your prophetic word, and to remove all stubborn ears from our midst. Do not leave us without your word, but make your home among us and restore the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, soften the hearts of every home. Turn parents and children toward each other in love and patience. Banish the spirit of impudence and stubbornness and rebellion from all. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, protect and defend our nation from its enemies. We ask that you support our leaders, our President Joseph Biden, our Governor Christy Noem, and all other elective leaders. We ask that you preserve them from temptation. Through the work of all the civil authorities, Father, enable us to live a quiet and peaceable life in accordance with your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And gracious Father, in our weakness, we are strong for the sake of Christ, whose grace is sufficient for all of our needs. Give comfort to those whose pain is chronic, whose sustained suffering is unknown, who wrestle with difficult thorns in the body or mind, and who are tempted to despair. We ask that you'd hear our prayers on behalf of those who have been battling cancer. Be with Tracy and Tara, Glenn and Jean, Beverly and Lindy, Georgette, Marlis, Bob and Emily, Stacy, Brian, Laura, Vonda, David, Lord, we ask that you be with others uh, battling different illnesses with Kellen and Harvard, Dee and Colette, Tiffany, Jim, Chris, Steve, Andrew, Diana, Clint, Dawn, Lois, Nathan, Pastor Jim, David, Stan, 
Angela, Trish, Sandy, Alvin, with Rob and Rhonda, and uh, be with Lester Gross and his uh, difficulties, Lord. We ask that you be with Becky Clyde and uh, her family mourning the loss of her brother Wayne. Uh, be with Rhonda Novak as uh, they mourn the loss of her brother Glenn. Uh, we ask that you give them encouragement. Be with Victor Lacey and all our armed forces who are deployed and their families. And Father, we ask that you bless um, uh, our region, but uh, many places that are in experiencing severe droughts, Lord. We pray that you would grant them uh, rain and the, the blessing of that gift in the midst of uh, our struggle, Lord. Uh, we pray that uh, we would find a refreshment in your word and the support that comes from the power uh, that your Son places upon us. And Lord, we ask that in the midst of all weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities, that you would help us to boast in your Son and his cross, by which we and our sufferings are sanctified. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, out of your abundant blessing, you satisfy us with Christ, the bread of life, Give repentance and faith to all who commune this day, that finding refuge in your Son's true body and blood, we may taste and see that you are good. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with our service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Invite you to rise as we sing our response to God in the canticle, Thank the Lord.
Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn, God Bless Our Native Land. Uh, God's blessings to you. I don't have any uh, verbal announcements outside of just the things that you see in the bulletin. And there is some sign-up sheets over there uh, related to the pancake feed coming up in a couple weeks. But uh, God's blessings to you. And enjoy the 4th of July. Uh, the church office, I guess that's an announcement. The church office is closed tomorrow in observance of the 4th. Uh, but God's blessings as uh, you celebrate our country's independence. And, uh, but ultimately, we celebrate the victory that we have in Jesus. Uh, both. Well, you got announcements. Thank up on you. All right, that's because I picked on you in the sermon. It's all right, you're forgiven. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Fourth of July. Uh, something new that we're doing later this month is we're having church family bingo night. I think that's July 31st, the last Friday of the month. So just be aware of that. That'll be from 6 to 8. We just ask that you please bring a snack to share with, share with everyone who attends. So again, July 31st, family bingo night, church family bingo night here at the church. Thanks, everyone.